Good morning, monkeys, and welcome back to another truck session. This story right here is probably one of the craziest stories from my prison time, and it was about the time that I got lucky in prison. It's not what you're thinking about, because getting lucky in prison sexually is never lucky, I think. But for me, what getting lucky means is I didn't get more time, bro, because the other dudes that was wrapped up in this situation definitely got more time, and it scared me to death. I was only about two months into prison, okay? And I'm in the federal penitentiary, USP Lee County. Been there for about two months. Now, anybody that knows anything about prison, you know that all prisons are pretty much segregated by race, religion, and politics. That's just how it is. That's how it's run. And it doesn't really matter what you think. It's what the prison already knows works. So when you go in, you're going to be segregated based on race, religion, and politics. That's just how it is. I start talking to the white guys, of course, because this is what you do. I go out and talk to the white guys. I first get there. Everybody hooks me up, clothes, things like that, man. Good dude. No bad charges. You know, I make sure everybody knows that. So about two months goes by, and there's something that happens in the hole with these guys called the Border Brothers, okay? Somehow they passed a knife to a person, and the other guys that was in the hole didn't want them to pass the knife, like gave them a warning or something. So... Here comes a note from the hole, written in, you know, runes so that the COs can't read it, which is absolutely retarded because if you don't think the COs know what runes are by now, bro, get real. So these notes would come out of the hole and it would be a little itty bitty tiny piece of paper that they could hide and it would be all folded up and it'd have these little things. Anyways, the instructions on this piece of paper says... Smash the Border Brothers. These two Border Brothers just came out of the hole. They violated smash them. They put these two border brothers in my unit, okay? I'm in A unit. They put them in my unit. So now the guys are like, yo, Jamie, check it out. Here's what's going on. Da 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 da. We're coming to your unit in the morning. You'll know the guard. You can kind of see what's going on in there. We're going to come in. We're going to hide in your cell. And then when we, these border brothers come out, smash time. So one thing about going to the hole is you always want to be able to take something for the fellas that are already in the hole. So back then, we still had tobacco, okay? Now, I don't have tobacco in the feds anymore. They actually took it out while I was there. But they had tobacco, and they had the bugler. So they had these pouches of roll-ups. So you had roll-up tobacco. You had papers. You could roll anywhere from 20 to 40 cigarettes out of this tobacco, depending on how big you rolled your cigarettes. One thing is to smash the Border Brothers. The second thing is you know you're going to the hole, which means we got to take something down. Again, I'm new to this, bro. I am not part of this gang. I've never been patched up. All this stuff is new to me. I'm just there doing what I think I should do because I am an absolute idiot and I am new to all of this. So they come in. We go in the cell. We're sitting in my cell. You know, we're looking out through the little crack. And he pulled this other cat named Dylan in too, right? So Dylan was down the hall from me, but he was in the same unit. Been locked up a long time. Everybody act like he was a cool cat, but he wasn't. Long story short, we watched for a little bit. AJ ends up getting bubble guts. Now, AJ, from my understanding, is still a guy to this day that runs one of these armed militia gangs, okay, which is the Aryan Resistance Militia. My understanding is he's still in that. I think he's still in prison. I think he's still running all that stuff to this day. But AJ was really new to this at this time too, man, right? So we're in a cell waiting, and AJ has two fingers, two fingers of tobacco. Yeah, see that? Two fingers like that of tobacco in his poop chute. No. Not going to do it. That's exit only for Jamie. So as we're sitting there for a little while, AJ gets bubble guts and AJ's got to poop. Well, guess what's coming out when AJ's got to poop? Yup, the tobacco. That's the first thing that comes out. Now, the whole thing is off. So nobody even wants to do the fight anymore because they can't get the tobacco down to the guys in the hole because AJ just pooped it all out and put it back in his pocket. His pocket. So now the hit's canceled and we go out. Everybody leaves. Now, the way this got lucky for me was I was there that morning and I was ready to do whatever I needed to do to make sure that I don't even know. I was just doing what the hell I was supposed to do. So stupid. Such a follower. I'm so glad that they called me for work call. I had put in for work call to go to Unicor. We had a factory that made armored vests and stuff for the military. We sewed them up, blah, blah, blah. I got a job the next day at Unicor. 
They send me to you, of course, 7.30 in the morning. It's me and Steve and other guys that are other guys that I know that are over there working. And of course, we're still talking about how this is going to go down. And if you don't know what the deuces are, the deuces go off. So when the deuces go off, this is a loud intercom system that goes across the prison and it says, get down on the ground, get down on the ground, a quest to say, a quest to say, Satifa, which means get down on the ground, get down on the ground. And it just goes over and over and over in a loop telling everybody to get down on the ground. You got to duck down to see what the guards are doing, whatever. So the deuces go off at about 1130, 12, right after lunch and unicorn work call. So as soon as they go off, bro, you know what I mean? The fellas are looking at each other like, you know what that is, don't you? We know what that is. It was Mike and AJ and Raz and Nate and Dylan. Five dudes beat these boys to death. Beat them, beat them, beat them, beat them until they had to be medically lifted by a helicopter to go to the hospital, right? To this day, and this comes from Chad Marks himself, last time I did an interview with him, he was telling me when he went to Lee County, the warden will meet you to this day and tell you this story that I'm telling you. And at the end of the story, he asked you, what is your shoe size? Because whatever your shoe size is, is how many years they are going to give you if you put boots to another man on that prison yard. So thankfully... They get into this big fight, and I'm in Unicor, which means when they get charged, and they get like 15 more years, 9 more years, 8 more years, each one of them got a little bit different time, but they all got more time, I didn't get more time, bro. And I'm so thankful to that to this day. So when this title is, you know, how I got lucky in prison, that's how I got lucky in prison. And that was only one of the times I got lucky in prison, bro, because there's a couple times that I narrowly missed getting more time or getting seriously injured in prison, man. And I'm just not that guy. Like, you know, I was a drug addict. I was a drug dealer. Like, I, that's what I did. I wasn't no gangster. I thought I was a gangster. But when I got to prison, bro, them dudes was gangster. Like, mm -mm. I, I'm, I'm just not built like that, bro. Like, if I had to do that type of shit for the rest of my life because I had 100 years like some of them cats, I'm pretty sure I could make it work. But no. I'm good, bro. I didn't want to be in there. I didn't want to spend more time in there. Like, some of them dudes were supposed to be going home, too, man. Like, I'm pretty sure that AJ didn't have that much time, and I think he's still in prison today, man. You know what I mean? And this was 20 years ago, but I'm pretty sure by the time that time was added and what other other time he got added onto it, man, he did a lot more time. So did Mike. And then the craziest part about it all was... First of all, these dudes did not know me from nobody, okay? They just pulled me in because I was in the unit, easy access. So when I disappeared, they used Dylan, okay? So when they used Dylan, Dylan ended up snitching on the dudes, man. I, I'm pretty sure Raz got nine years. I think AJ got 14. And I, I want to say Mike and Nate got somewhere like seven to nine years apiece. But when Dylan told on everybody, Dylan only got like 18 months, I don't know what happened to Dylan when he went to another prison because I guarantee you if any of them armed dudes was on another yard and they saw Dylan come on that yard, it was stomping time. Believe that. No way you get mixed up with some boys like that and then snitch, right? So that leaves me in another dilemma that makes me think about a few things, man. What if I would have been in the fight and then what if they would have offered me more time? Because... I wouldn't have snitched, man. That's just how it is. I'm not going to snitch because why would I snitch so that I could be like Dylan and running for the rest of my life scared to death that these dudes are going to kill me in the next prison? That's just crazy. So I would have had to take the hit, man. I would have took the hit in the head and I might still be sitting in prison today because of that too, man. Super scary shit, man. When you go to prison, man, do as much research as you can. Know as many things as you can. Don't follow them people, bro. Don't follow them people. Do you. Do what you got to do to go home. Don't worry about all them dudes, man. There are a bunch of clowns in there and they don't want to go home like you. Some of them want to stay there, bro. Like, you, you, you have to be smart. If you get into trouble, don't go in there and get into more trouble. When you go into prison, learn how to get smart, learn how to get in shape, and, and learn how to stay the fuck out of prison, man. That's the most important thing you can do when you go inside of them walls. And look at me, man. I'm sitting out here in the middle of a field right now. The sun is shining. The wind is blowing. There's deer out here somewhere. I saw one yesterday. Prison sucks. And I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful today to not be in there. I feel sorry for some of them cats that are in there, man. My buddy Arvis just came home. That dude's been in for like 20 some odd years off and on, man. I can't wait to do an interview with him. 
I just want to drop this story and let y'all know a little bit about some of the experiences that I went through while I was in prison. It was definitely the most traumatic and horrific experience of my life. Um, and I say traumatic because it is trauma. Whenever you leave someplace and you have nightmares of that place, that is trauma. Period. If you want to support the channel, man, like, subscribe, and share. And if you'd like to spend a couple bucks and get you some cool shirts at spankingmonkeys.store, please go and do that, man. I got some really cool shirts. I got more coming up. And uh, until the next time, man, don't sweat the petty things. Pet the sweaty things.